Hello again, everybody. Uh, discussing today a, a starter motor circuit for Asian cars and for any other car, for that matter. Um, we know the basics for it. But in this case, they have something called multi-fuse fuses in one container, let's say. And one side is common to this side. So, what's the reason for this? As you all know, we always have the same starter relay. We always have to have ignition switch in a transmission range switch to give us the ground to make sure you're in park or neutral, like we said before. They threw in something a little different over here with the PCM uh, starter switch signal to the PCM. So basically the same components. So starting from the battery, like we always do, from the positive terminal, as you see over here, the negative goes to G1, which is left front of engine compartment, and also to the transmission. We use that, the housing, as, <clears throat> uh, as the ground also with the black wires. So starting over here, current flows into one multi-fuse. That's a big multi-fuse, 120 amps. It comes out of the other multi-fuse, which is only 50 amps. So the white wire, it comes back up here, follow the arrows into pin three over here and the ignition switch in a start position, only in a start position. It comes over here, has a choice over here. We come to a splice, I call it a node. We're not gonna do this one yet, but we're gonna do the fundamentals. For, again, we come to a relay, which one has to be activated first? Always this side first. So current flows from the uh, ignition switch in the start position through a black and white wire to terminal three of the, the relay. And then to four, which is the coil. It activates the coil. And then this is the problem. We need 12 volts over here, which we have. We need a ground. Sometimes the computer could give you a ground. So when I'm looking at this, I'm saying PCM. Why does it go to the PCM? Maybe it's giving a ground to the relay, but no. What's giving the ground? The transmission range switch to make sure you're in neutral or park. Once this is in either position, now you're connected to the physical ground. So there is no ground given by the PCM. Now you have current flowing here, no problem. We have a ground, we have 12 volts. Now the current split, this is activated, the, the contacts, we come to this position. Now we have current flowing to black and white wire through the, the, the windings, uh, coil windings, the sol uh, solenoids. And now we activate uh, the contact over here to close this. Now we go into the uh, starter motor. So obviously a couple of things to, to take away from this. First thing is always first, this needs current to flow. Once this flows, then we have this closing this circuit, activating the uh, pulling winding and the holding winding. And then we have this activated to the starter motor. So this wire, this wire, you can see this wires is a little thicker in, in blackness. They, they drew a little thicker. That means it's more current. So... More current goes through this one, and current goes through this one. So, in other words, this will be the big one, the high gauge wire, that will take the massive amount of current when the starter motor is activated, depending how many cylinders you are, and other features have to be taken into consideration. 300, 400 um, amps, this is the one that goes through the thick one, that goes to this. The black wire in this one. They're all black, but this one, the thick one. So, let's come come out with a couple of things before um, before we analyze and troubleshoot. Here, first of all, like I said before, there is no fuse here. You will not see a multi-multi-fuse because the rating is so high of amps. Once this is activated, the starter motor gets 12 volts over here and 12 volts right to the starter motor. And then the other side of this goes to ground. Fine. We, we, I, let's come back to this that I started with the video. 
So a couple of weeks ago, when I got when I got a customer, the car came on a on a tow truck. Not nothing, absolutely nothing started. So reason being, when you put the 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 booster, the cables, you put it in reverse. When you put something in reverse, in polarity, guess what it takes? It takes the multi fuse, the big big fuse, and it blows it. This is, is a one unit. Okay, this is not a separate unit, a separate fuse, a separate fuse. The common point of this point is connected to this point. But when this blows, forget it. It doesn't matter if this blows or this blows. It doesn't matter. The unit is inoperative. Can't use it. So you have to be careful when you put rever a reverse polarity of anything, especially in automotive, but... You have to be careful because there are PCMs and modules which can be affected and can, can be damaged by things like that. So, come over here now. Let's get back to this one before we troubleshoot. We set over here the ignition coil. Coil, the current went here. We know that. The current also had another path. The current had another path. The current flows through here through a 7.5 amps, and now it goes to the PCM, start a switch signal, to give the PCM the 12 volts that it needs for whatever reason it needs it. Obviously, it needs 12 volts, it has to come from, through the multi-fuse, through the ignition switch in the start position. Okay, that's another part of the, of the schematic. Okay, now, now we have all the details together, Let's try to troubleshoot. Now, here comes the tricky part. Things that you can get access to, and this is why I brought this up in this video, even though I did it before, a lot of questions and comments were made. Where can I measure 12 volts? Okay, it's a little tricky because you have the transmission range switch, and where is it on? A left side of transmission. That's a difficult part. Okay, I wanna measure 12 volts over here. We said we have 12 volts here. 12 volts coming out of ignition switch. Okay, that's the difficult part. Am I gonna go and take an ignition switch apart? No. What I said before was find an same access point that you can measure that is connected to the component that is hard to get access to, or you have to take it apart, whatever. That's too difficult. You don't wanna go through that. So we come to this point over here. We go to after the component that we want to measure. Okay, so let's say 12 volts before the component. Here is after the component. After the component is what we're trying to derive to make sure we have 12 volts. Again, we don't want to go through all this and take this apart and all these things. So what are we going to do? We have a choice. This connection here is the same as this relay. And this connection over here to this fuse is the same point electrically wise uh, uh, electrical wise yeah so therefore we can choose one of these points to measure 12 volts and then we would know the ignition switch is good take your choice i would go with the fuse because the fuse is always easy to get to the relay like you see my videos on automotive electronic schematic for joseph you'll see more hands-on details and the other channel, Joe Electronics Max for Auto, you will see that I put, you need special insertions, ins, ins, insertions for these to measure relay. But that's costly. Like I said, I take a copper wire, I put it in the terminal directly, like you see in the video, go look for that one, and I measure 12 volts. So either I go to the fuse, either, either side, this side or this side. But remember, if this fuse is blown, be careful, because if this fuse is blown, I might measure zero volts, and I might think, uh-huh, zero volts here, maybe the ignition switch is, is not good. So measure both sides of the fuse if you're going to do that. Again, <clears throat> if you're going to get zero volts here, you're going to make a, 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 a misdiagnosis, and you're going to say, uh-huh, nothing's coming from the ignition switch. Could be the ignition switch. No, don't do that. Measure two points. Measure this, this point and that point. Once you get 12 points, 12 volts here or there, that's it. You know the ignition switch is doing its job. It is this contact is touching this contact. It's making a connection with it. I'm good over here. I don't have to take a part no ignition switch.
okay? Or go to the relay, like I said, watch the video. Now, what's the other alternative that many, the majority of people will do? The majority of people will do is, let me jump this. Now, which side do we jump? I just warned you about putting reverse polarity of a battery uh, uh, any vehicle doesn't matter Asian obviously you never cross cross um, cables a battery not just automotive any power supply any any power supply so now we're gonna jump this one no why because this is a core this has resistance if you jump this one by mistake you're taking out the resistance when you take out the resistance the current will increase ohm's law so we're going to find this one. We're going to go to this one to this one. Which points? Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Or pin 1, pin 2, as we call it. We're going to jump this one. Let's see what happens when we jump that one. When we jump this one, okay? We want to see if the starter motor is, is engaged, is activated. So, like I said, I always put wires in here and measure it that way but since the majority of people are going to jump this uh, it's something that i think is significant to go through to make sure you do it correctly we don't have the usual terminals of 86 87 30 remember we had those on the relays look at this this is different three four and we have one and two we're going to jump take a jump a wire and go from here to here one to two fine Let's say these. Let's say we jump it. Start a motor starts. What does that tell you? This is the difficult part. You have to have a schematic in front of you. If you don't have a schematic, you will be confused. This is why I know when I told you originally, and I said when I want to measure 12 volts from the ignition switch, I could go to this fuse. How would I know that? without a wiring diagram. If I just go to the fuse panel and, and flip over the fuse cover, would I know that this is connected to this, right? Would I know that this relay is connected to this? I only know by the wiring diagram. So it is, to me, without a wiring diagram, I cannot count to, to two without a wiring diagram. This allows me to go to this point and I took this out of the equation and that's a lot of labor to take it apart sometimes, to do that the hard way. You have to have a wiring diagram. So let's go again. I jumped this. This came on. Starter motor came on. Great. What does that tell you? Number one, it tells me all this is good, and the starter motor is good, and this the solenoids are good because they're being activated. Starter motor is good. Fine. What else does it tell you? It tells me that I got 12 volts over here, and I have current flowing from where? I have current flowing from this point over here, from this point here. That means the 12 volts that came here, the 12 volts that came here, remember, I am not in a start position. Remember that. I'm not. All I'm doing is I'm jumping this. It tells you this and the starter motor is working. So basically, I'm in the a lock position over here. I don't have 12 volts coming from, from here. Okay? I don't have 12 volts coming from here until I put the start, I, until I put the ignition switch in a start position. Then, when I put the, start, the, the in a start position, right, and I crank it, and I jump this, then I know I'm getting 12 volts through the ignition switch, through the multi-fuse, both multi-fuses are good. Obviously the, the battery is good, and this wire is good, most important. This wire is good, right? Okay, remember before the beginning, remember before the beginning, this was not, this, we didn't know if the, this is the problem or this is the problem. So one way of doing it is let's jump this, so have somebody in the car, sit in the car, crank it. This works. This means this is good. Your starter motor is good. Part of the relay is good. 
Ignition switch is good, wiring is good, multi-fuse is good, the battery is good, the terminals are good. I don't have corrosion on the on the on the on the battery terminals. Otherwise, how can I get 12 volts to start all this? Correct? So therefore, once we do that, we're we're limited to this. Now this might be the problem. So if this is the problem, how much should I measure over here? With this going to ground, I should measure zero volts. Where am I going to measure zero volts? Am I going to go to the transmission range switch? Remember, I jumped this. Motor came on. So motor came on. I knew right away this is all good. Problem is over here. I go, I'm going to measure over here zero volts at the terminal of four. If I measure zero volts, what does that tell me? All this is good. The switch is good. The park or neutral switch is good. I'm dealing with this part of the relay that's not good. Remember, don't jump this part. Jump this part. Okay? Now, let's say I don't get zero volts here. Let's say I get 12 volts here. I get 12 volts over here. You have to get 12 volts because you know you have 12 volts here because this started this. Therefore, if I get 12 volts over here, it's floating. That means this is not connected to ground. Maybe the switch, maybe the ground. What can I do? Let me take four, terminal four, and put it to ground. And then I'll know if it comes on. If it comes on, when I give it a ground, the problem is this one. I know it's confusing, go over it. But for the people who want to do it, who want to jump it, that's what it would detail of that. But you have to have the schematic in front of you. Like I said, always pay attention to these vehicles of these high-rated multi-fuses that go sometimes, obviously. And like I said, this is just feeding the, the computer. But the good access point to know if this is good is here and here and here. If I get 12 volts over here after this is closed, great. All of this is working. All of this is working over here. Okay. Anyway, please go to my channel. You'll see a video where I put in relay. I measure in the car. Uh, so hands on. So automotive electronic schematics by Joseph. And the other one, Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto. Uh, the subscribers are going pretty good. Sometimes subscribers have more than the views, believe it or not. And that's the way it is. But anyway, thank you very much. Thanks.